am here with Sander, who, who is the founder of a new platform that works on a slightly different type of EMDR. And the whole theoretical orientation is a little different. So Sander, first of all, welcome. And thank you for joining me. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks. Yeah, Sander, what is uh, the platform that you developed, if you can say in a few words, what is the theoretical orientation that it's based on? Yeah, it is a digital uh, EMDR platform for clinicians to use in their face-to-face, -face, but also in their remote therapy. But it's based on the working memory theory uh, in EMDR and also based on the 2.0 principles of EMDR that is quite famous in Europe, at least in Holland, uh, the Netherlands where we're from. It is the main used uh, uh, therapy. So uh, it's completely based on that. Yeah, so EMDR 2.0 is based on the working uh, memory theory, and I think it's getting traction in the U.S. too. I heard really good things about it. Uh, so what is in the platform, and how is it different than other EMDR platforms out there? So um, um, it, it, in the beginning, it looks quite similar to what people are used to, uh, in the U.S. at least, and um it is based on eye movements from left to right. So you're following a ball. But the main difference is that there are in some algorithms behind it. And there's an AI detecting the performance of an individual patient. So instead of only looking at uh, eye movements from, from left to right, clients also have to perform certain tasks. And we're registering what they're doing. And based on how they're performing, it intensifies the, the treatment and the session. So it becomes harder or uh, less harder uh, while performing these tasks. And we're doing that for a clinician. So it is not an assumption anymore for a clinician to, to make the assumption of, do I have to go faster or slower or what do I have to do? We're doing that for you. And that helps a lot of clinicians. Excellent. Um, so I suggest we jump right in and look at the platform and what it looks like. Yeah, let's do that. And I, for this demonstration, you will be the patient and I will be the therapist. So we're switching sides. So this is great. So both um, the clinician and the, and the client would go to digital-emdr.com and they would see uh, this screen. Um, let me go back to here. They would see this screen. So I'm the clinician right now. I have a, uh, a login. Uh, so I can log in as a, as a therapist and then it asks for a session ID. And on the other side, uh, what I just showed is that the client also goes to this website and then follows these steps. You're selecting on what device they're on. You're on computer. So you're pressing computer and they're accepting everything. And then the whole program loads. So yeah. for this introduction, I will be the therapist. I will make sure that I need a session ID. And on your side, uh, you've already opened the, the website. You can probably say start session right now. And then mm -hmm. there would be like some sort of an apartment room in front of you with a session ID on top of it. And I need that session ID. So can you tell me that? Yeah. So should I, uh, do you want me to share my screen uh, to show what it looks on my end or just tell you the session ID? Yeah. If, if that's possible, please. Yeah. And yep. that's what it looks on my end. So digital EMDR, visual task, I go with the arrows and then audio task with the space bar, start session. Yeah. And here is my session ID. Yeah. So this is how your site looks and you have two controls. That was the arrow key down and the space bar. And that's everything you need to know. Um, and now you can stop share your screen. We'll go back to the therapist side. Okay. Yeah. So let's go to here. What was the session ID? Um, it was one three zero two one zero zero eight. Okay. Great. So now I am connecting with you. Um, and this is the whole admin panel in front of me with a session ID. Uh, that says I'm connected right now, so I'm connected with you. We have all different kind of modules. Um, 
I will explain that in this small demonstration. We also have this show tips option where um, they will explain all the features of the, the whole program. So first of all, we have a video call option uh, because if I'm giving remote therapy, I can call you and we have a Zoom in our program. So you don't have to use a different video call platform to use uh, uh, our program in a remote session. Uh, we have a visual task. Uh, I will explain that later. And we have a start activate task. Um, the whole uh, theory behind the product is based on the working memory theory. So um, the working memory theory, of course, uh, and also the 2.0 movement uh, that is rapidly evolving is about upping the working memory uh, uh, taxation quite high. Um, and what we see out of our data and out of recent studies we've did is that um, there is some sort of a sweet spot. So um, you can go too high, that it's just too hard to follow, or you can go too low, and then it's just not engaging enough. And what our algorithm does, it is searching that optimal level for you as a clinician. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to toggle the visual task on. Um, and for example, just as an EMDR therapist, just do your normal session. Just do it as you're used to be, used to do. And instead of doing the finger from left to right or adding the light bar, you just toggle the visual task on and you press start task. And then on your side, uh, Rodham, there will be a ball moving into the screen, right? And yes, I can see the ball. Okay. And what you now have to do is you press the arrow key down when it changes from a ball to a cylinder. Because you see that the ball shape is changing exactly yes. like this. Yeah. And you do that as fast as you can. And just keep doing that. And I'm going to explain what I see on my side we can see now that the visual task is going faster and faster. And I am not doing anything as a therapist. This is the algorithm and the AI behind the platform detecting uh, how the performance is on the other side. And it becomes more and more difficult. Um, I can make it even more difficult by adding a audio task. And what you now have to do is you press the space bar when you hear a audio sound. Do you hear that? Yes. And it yes, is I becoming think, more challenging. Yeah. But I, I don't think the participants or the, the, the people that are looking at this can hear it because I cannot hear it, but you can hear it. Um, I can hear it. It's really yeah. hard. So you have a visual and an audio task combining left and right. So it's also the bilateral stimulation, left hand, right hand. And it becomes harder. But we can still see that the speed is going up. So this is not hard enough. What I'm going to do now is I can add the ball color change, and I'm going to ask you to tell me the color of the ball also. Oh, wow, well, green, pink, green, red, orange, purple, blue, green. Okay, I'm going to pause it for, for a second because you were two minutes already <laughs> in a session. Um, it is yeah. quite taxing. Can you go to, to this screen? So, Sandra, let me the... ask you a quick question before. So while we're doing all these tasks, do I ask the client to focus on traumatic memory like we do in regular EMDR? Yeah, like the, the, the one uh, component that is not in this situation is that you have to think about the memory and that makes it even more uh, taxing. So you are now at 87%. Uh, uh, um, this is uh, while not thinking about an image. So this is probably being around 60 or 70% if you have to think about it. So what we all, all always say is that this program really helps you but you should not change anything about your session uh, as you were doing it before. Do mm -hmm. you suggest that uh, clinicians can do it just in person? So it's not only as a virtual platform. So let's say a client sits in my office, 
I can use that platform. I can put my laptop in front of them and then control uh, control it or be the therapist, right? Because the algorithm basically controls it. But uh, look at what they're doing and add tasks based on their performance using my app, iPad or my phone. Yeah, no, exactly. We see after COVID that at least in the Netherlands, there's a lot of clinicians doing face-to-face work again. And what they're doing is people bring their own phone or their own iPad, or they have an iPad available that's connected to their computer. Um, and you saw in the beginning that you could choose, right? Am I on a computer or am I on a, on a, a mobile? And it is, it is the same, same as you're on, on, on an iPhone. Instead of the arrow key and the space bar, there are two touchscreen buttons on the left side and the right side of your screen. So there's nothing uh, changed in the whole program. So it, it, at least um, I think more than 50% of our uh, users are doing it face-to-face and mm-hmm. they're sitting next to the, to the client and they have an iPad in front of them and the task is on and they have time to make notes because uh, the algorithm is doing at least uh, uh, most of the work for them. So they have time to focus on the client. They have time to look at the client. You have to make make notes. So it's really also helping them with less physical uh, work. Yeah. Okay, that that sounds great. So I I noticed that you have some uh, the sub scale there uh, and some temporary notes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, it, it, we have three tasks, visual tasks, audio tasks, distraction tasks, and the only thing I can toggle them on and off and then start it here. And then the program does it. And then it's the same. Okay, how high is the sub? It starts at a 10. It is a five now. It is a zero after the third set. Uh, I've made my notes here. And in the end, I can go to a second target and start again. It is a seven and it goes down. And the important thing in here is that this really helps you, saves you some administration time. And in the end of a session, you can copy this and paste it in your own like patient uh, electronic system because we would not save this personal information, at least the notes. <laughs> also, we do not save it. So this is all personal. You have to copy it and then paste it to your own system. Yeah, that that makes sense. You don't want to save um, patient record on your system. No, no. And maybe the, the next few things, are, um, what is really interesting here is that um, if I'm toggling these two on and I'm pressing start task, I have these color indicators on the right side of my screen here um, that are telling me um, how good or bad or whatever a person is responding. So blue flickering means uh, that the ball speed is increasing. So that means that the reaction time is really fast. Uh, Gray is there's no click detected. Uh, Red is um, there's no click detected. Yellow was um, that it there was a click, but it was not on time. So these indicators really give you like a uh, look inside the brain or inside the working memory capacity of a client because this skill goes up and down. We saw this going up from 25 to 87 uh, in that two minutes. And I saw with all the colors, uh, they're now not doing anything because you're not responding. Um, right. How good or or bad uh, you're doing, and that really helps you as a clinician a lot. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Sander, before we say goodbye, anything else that you want uh, EMDR clinicians to know about this platform? Um. Uh, yeah. There's one last thing. Um for therapists that are uh, really interesting in also doing this uh, evidence-based. Um, we've done multiple studies uh, in the Netherlands and um, there's two important studies I would like to, to highlight. Um, first of all, we did a comparison study with a light bar EMDR session or multiple light bar EMDR sessions uh, compared to the WeMind EMDR, so our product. And we have almost 200% more uh, working memory stimulation compared to the light bar. So in that whole theory of working memory stimulation, 
this is really improving the session outcome. And later on, we did a breakthrough uh, study in the Netherlands that's released, uh, uh, I think next week we're going to release that study, where we saw that if you would look at time efficiency compared, again, the light bar to our product, that the average sub decrease from beginning to end, so let's say it starts at eight and it decreases to one or, or zero, um, takes almost half the time compared to the, to the light bar. So this tool would really help you save time. It really helps you improve your session outcome. We saw in multiple sessions that people were having the time to do a second image or a second target while doing the light bar one hour session is just only doing one image if you're lucky. So we're really trying to make session outcome better or at least more efficient. And that works for you. Um, I, we can share that. So if you're interested in that, um, please contact us. And the last thing is that we have a whole exposure uh, function here, an exposure uh, module that is completely based on the EMDR 2.0 theory uh, or method where you can directly stream uh, any type of contact, audio, uh, video, or images through the client. So let's say you want to trigger somebody with an image of a person or a certain car crash or any traumatic event, you could upload it yourself, stream it to the client, make that full screen, uh, and then overlaying the EMDR task. You can also look inside our preset library of 200 plus videos that are already there for you. That's like car crashes, um, anxiety, basement, fear of heights, it could be anything. Uh, this will really help you enhance your uh, therapy. So I think this is also a real benefit of our platform that makes it, um, make it more personal. And on the other side, the last thing is that you can also change the backgrounds. We have a apartment room now here. You can also make it a bit more child-friendly if you want like an image of a... I don't know, a beach or a forest, you can choose. So um, we would all encourage you to try it out. Uh, there's multiple options for that. So just reach out. Yeah, thank you, Sander. So this is um, just to recap it all based on the working memory theory, which it, EMDR 2.0 is based on. And this is the the only, at, at least at the time of this recording, the only virtual platform that offers this. So thank you so much, Sander. Um, and uh, we will also link to these studies that you mentioned, we'll link below this video, wherever people are watching it, uh, we'll uh, make sure that they have access to this study. So thank you. Thank you so much, Sander, for your time. Thank you. Enjoyed it.